Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Jewel TV. I'm Juliana Kelleher, broadcasting to you live from our new studio here in Bend, Oregon. And with me today is Ula Couture. We are in for a wonderful mini mentoring session today. I'm very excited that she's joining us. All the way from North Dakota, if I'm not mistaken, right, Ula? Am I correct there? Yeah, you are correct. Well, that welcome. Is right. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for subjecting yourself to me. <laughs> In this, uh, in this mini mentoring session, Ula has been a student of mine at Creative Live. I remember when you came out all the way from North Dakota for that. Um, and she's a wonderful photographer and is doing great. And one of her big questions was, of course, making that switch from doing all digital model to actually offering products and raising your prices. I think that's what you struggled with for a, a couple of years now. Am I, am I right? Ooh, yep, talk to me it is exactly that. right. Um, <laughs> I remember when I came out and I met you in Seattle, you're like, just do it and just kind of figure it out and, you know, just do kind of a base price to, to kind of like put your feet in and get wet. And um, I did that, that as well. And then I was getting feedback um, about how it was too expensive and mm. I didn't. And so I got scared and I just dropped it and I was just like, I'll just go back to shoot and burn. And I've been there and it's, I and you're struggling. Out. I hear yeah, exactly. So, so today we're going to talk all about that. And that is what's part of today's episode. So I'll go ahead and um, show our keynotes here so everybody can see. And I'm on a new computer. So you guys are going to have to bear with me here because everything wants to go on multiple screens. So I think I'll just put it like this. So anyway, it's a, the joys of moving, right? That's what happens to you when, you when you end up moving. But anyway, Ula has volunteered to talk to us today. I know a lot of you struggle with this same thing, switching from an all digital model, because you know everybody does that at first. It's easy, it's simple, it's, it's what kind of gets you out there as far as becoming a professional. Um, and so that's what the discussion is today. Today's episode is number 31 of Jewel TV, of course, brought to you as a Jewel TV production. If you'd like to see this episode, if you're watching on YouTube as a recording, or if you'd like to uh, see more recordings of Jewel TV, go to jewel-tv.com. You're going to go ahead and fill out this little form here that says, uh, put your email in to access freebies we have for certain episodes and to access the archives and you will have access to all 31 episodes of Jewel TV. So today it's mini mentoring with Ula Couture and we're talking about switching from a shoot and burn model to products. It's, you know, when, like I said, when you start out, you start doing digitals. That's what's easy. It's what comes out of your camera. It's simple. You don't have to get overwhelmed with a product line. Um, you can sell your work, make, like, make a little money doing what you're doing, and then gradually grow into a product line of actual you know, things people put on the walls or albums or whatever. So as Ula was talking to, you know, she worked with Belinda a lot in the beginning when we were setting up this episode, and she was talking about uh, you know, this, you tried to go to IPS and to products and then you got scared. And I think confidence is a big issue. Don't you think Ula when, when switching? Definitely it is. I, um, I really lacked confidence for sure. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I just kind of jumped in and I knew it was something that made my heart really happy, but yeah. I didn't know if I was actually doing it correctly. And, um, now I can see, like, I can nitpick things out like, Oh, their feet should have gone back a little bit further or their head yeah. should have been tilted a little bit this way more. Um, so I'm seeing it a lot more than when I did a couple years ago where I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I shouldn't even, I don't know what to do. Right? So Yeah. I, I remember that feeling all too well. And, and I think the point that I want to drive home to you today is not necessarily, it's not necessarily in the work. When people say you're too expensive, they're not saying that necessarily because of the work. They're saying that because of the big picture of what they see in the business. Do you know what I mean? It's not right. just they're looking at your photography and going, oh, that's not worth $700 or whatever. That's not worth $2,000. They're looking at the experience of working with you as a whole. They're, they're, they're seeing the brand or the lack thereof. Right. Um, they're seeing your website. They're seeing your work. They're seeing the products you carry. They're seeing the studio. They're seeing all these components that come together. And then that subconsciously is, is telling them 
or making them ask, is this worth the price? So there's a few things I want to go over with you today. We're going to look at your work. We're going to look at your website, which I know may make you cringe a little bit because we need to work on that. Right. Um, <laughs> we, we need to, we're going to look at your pricing structure of what you did before and you know, what you kind of switch back to and help you walk you through that. Um, and, and, you know, obviously we can't cover everything in a quick 30 minutes here, right. at least it'll get you started and kind of seeing the big picture of all of this. So let's dive right in. We're going to first look at image quality. We want to ask ourselves when we're trying to switch from uh, what I would call for totally lack of a better word, a beginner pricing model, mm -hmm. meaning digital shooting and burning because Let's face it, it's overwhelming to bring in a product line. It's a lot of work. You have to find vendors. You have to create a system and a workflow. You have to sell those products. You have to you know, display those products to your clients. You have to um, you know, have samples up. You have to have a product guide. I mean, there's so many things that go into selling products, actual physical products. But digital, sometimes it's like, oh, this is so much easier. I'm not going to do anything else, right? I mean, that's the, right. that's, exactly. that's the mentality you want to have. So the four things that we need to look at are first of all image quality do my images look like art rather than shoot and burn do they have a consistent style are do you have the technical quality that kind of thing then the second thing we want to look at is branding and this is probably I probably should have put this first honestly Ula but mm -hmm. branding is the overall big picture that the clients see feel and physically experience when they work with your business. Right. And when I say work with your business, it doesn't, they don't have to be a client. They could be a potential client just kind of peering in the window of your business and seeing what's there. Does the brand match the price? How right. do I appear to a customer? And this involves, you know, like, you know me, I always say 40,000 feet, man. Right. Look up here, look at your business from the outside in. Then you'll get a better flavor and you'll grow more confidence that what the customer sees offers the value that the price commands. Does that make sense? At it all? does make sense. Yeah. Now that I'm able to like, now that I've been doing it for a while that I'm able to actually look back and like, um, and I've been listening to enough like creative live or, you know, yeah. your, you know, TV and, and like, Oh yeah. Like I did because I've been so myopic of like, got to get the sessions done, got to get it, you know, edited, got to get those digitals out, blah, blah, you know, cause I'm, I mean, yeah. you know, quantity versus quality right now. And I yeah. want to create art is what I would really like to be Yeah. Able to do. And your images are there. We're going to look at your images in a minute. And I, I want to do that because I want to give you some confidence or at least try to help you give you some confidence there. But number three is pricing. Clearly, am I priced for profit? And right now, girl, you are not priced for profit. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, you know I'm teasing you, and you. No, no, no. It's good. <laughs> I feel like I can, I can kind of be a little hard on you because you. Yeah. I know you can take it. <laughs> but you know, I'll never, I'll never BS you. I'm going to tell you like it is. I, exactly. I, I, I always give it an Oreo cookie, but you know, with the sandwich, the, the critique in the middle. But <laughs> I, I definitely want. I want. You're. You have so much potential, and that potential I'm seeing realized in the last year, year and a half since I saw you and I feel like you have this projectile ability to grow mm -hmm. you just need a few things to kind of place the wheels in motion if that makes sense you've right. got this wheel but there's no spokes in it to make it really yeah, spin exactly. nice <laughs> or the yeah. other wheel on the axle you know so I'm just gonna have this one wheel and it's just <laughs> Yeah, it rolls for a bit, but it doesn't go very far. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> no, and I see the potential in you, and so I'm like, okay, Ulo, you can do this. I know you can. So we're going to look at your pricing, and I, I so commend you for, like, willing to be to go out in public like this and help other students as well, because I know there's a ton of people in your shoes, and I hope that gives you some confidence, too, knowing that you're not the only one out there who's right. struggling with this, this um, path. You know, it's a challenging one, but once you hit this hurdle and get over it, you're going you're gonna to feel better, and things are going to start turning around. So um, this all leads into number four, which is confidence. How do I grow the guts to actually make these changes and lose those clients whom I know I'm going to lose. It's, right. it's going to happen. 
it's going to happen. You just have yep. to like accept that one, roll with the punches and go, okay, this, we are going to lose some clients, but that's okay. That means I need to build into a different client base. Exactly. Okay. And you're a bit of an extreme case. Your pricing is rather low right now and you need to climb up to where you can actually be profitable. So you're going to see um, a, a, a growing pain there. You're going to see some. Right. Um, and I think that's what's scary. I think you like it. Belinda told me that you said, um, George's family reunion was coming to town. Right, exactly. It is basically whenever it's like I, I get close to it and it's just like the whole peanut gallery is there. Like, what do you think you're doing? You're yeah. just going to like, you live in a town of like 1500 people. What do you think you're doing? You know, and like, yeah. and, and that's okay because looking back at my client base that I've had this past year, everybody drives at least 40, you know, minutes to an hour and a half to come to my studio. And yeah. You know, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting okay with that. You yeah, know, portion the of it. confidence, the confidence will grow, and I think, really, what it comes down to, Ula, is that knowledge is power. Like, right. when you know what's going on in your business and you understand how the components work together to influence the client psychologically, right? Then you go, okay, George is in my ear, but but dang, I know this is going to work. Like right. if you knew it was going to work, you would yes. be way more confident weathering the bad times, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. It gets um, pretty, like I'm pretty okay with being in, you know, sub zero temperatures and staying alive. But as soon as I hear a whisper from George, I'm just like, oh, I can't. Like, I, I don't know. I just like ran out, I don't know, without my snow gear. Right. <laughs> and so and for those of you who don't know who are watching this live or after the fact, George is that voice in your head that criticizes you. I, I, I gave him a persona years ago on my first creative live, uh, pricing and sales course, I think it was, and it just kind of stuck. <laughs> and so George and, and Ula, I think, took it one step further when she said George has, have, has a family reunion from time to time. And, right. you know, he does in my head too. We all go through this. I mean, it's just in a different it's just, it's just different pieces of the puzzle. You know, we just built the studio. My rent just doubled. I've got crazy overhead. It's scary as all get out. And I'm like, holy cow, we got to make this work. Like we got to make this work, you know? And, and part of being an entrepreneur is faking it till you make it like really right. letting your confidence just go, you know what? I know I can weather any storm and saying things to yourself, Ula, like, you know what, charging 175 for a newborn session in the files is never, you're, you're no. going to crumble. Like yeah. you're going to die. I like, am dying. I'm like... gonna die. <laughs> and so it's like, and so by putting that alternative in your head versus the one of, okay, my clients are going to drop off, but at least I know every single session I'm doing is going to be profitable. Right. Then you'll say to yourself, okay, now it's just a matter of getting clients. And I, I understand the, the fear all too well because what's what's hard is not knowing where to fix the problem right so you know pricing is a problem right now okay so we know how to fix that and we're going to talk about that a little bit more but then once the clients stop calling you're like crap i've got another problem how do i fix it right yeah. and so i want to help you look at the business from the outside perspective in to see where the problems are. So if we do jump up to a $700 average, all of a sudden, and you don't have any clients anymore, why is that happening? It's not because of the price, I can guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. You automatically think it's, George thinks it's the price. Yes. <laughs> and so you go, oh my gosh, I gotta lower back down again to get clients. But there's buying methodologies in a client's head in, Different clients have different buying methodologies. Mm -hmm. The clients you're attracting now are the clients who are solely interested in price. That is right. their MO. That is the way they make buying decisions. They are low-end consumers. And almost all low-end consumers make decisions based on price or the number of features they get in something. They want a lot for a little. Okay? Exactly. <laughs> these are, you know, these are people who this is why Walmart and Target and these big box stores do really well because they advertise these lost leaders, these really reduced prices on dirt cheap things, on, on, on nice things like TVs at a hundred bucks, you know, things mm -hmm. the whole Black Friday thing. That is a lost leader. They, 
advertise that to get you in the store because they know once you're in the store, you'll buy more because they've mastered that psychology. Does that make sense? No, it totally makes sense. So the, so, but that doesn't work in our industry because we're single owner proprietor and we, if we're especially we're only selling digital files, we only have one product. We can't upsell, exactly. right? We can't add more to it. Like right. lost leader them in with low digital files and then try to sell. It just doesn't work in our industry. So um, most photographers, unless they're running extremely high volume businesses, are not going to be, shouldn't be targeting the low end consumer, period. No, no. And I'll show you really quick. This is yeah. my calendar. I don't know if you, can you see it? I can. Holy cow. It's okay. Like pretty much, I don't go to bed until like two o'clock in the morning oh, and I'm like constantly editing. I'm trying to catch up. I'm, yeah, I know my consumers are not like getting the best service because I'm trying to fit everybody in and try oh, to make, sweet. you know, profit and stuff. So I'm like, you, I'm like, whatever you need to say, I want, I'm here to hear it because I have like. I'm, yeah, oh, I'm yeah. ready. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So how many clients are you shooting a week on average? Um, on average, I probably like probably four to six on the weekends and then probably about four or five during the week. So like 10 plus a week, 10 plus clients a week. And how yeah. many images are you providing them per, per session? I know it's different. A session. lot. Different yeah, no, it's a lot. I don't have a limit. So like a newborn session can be like, um, 40 to 60 images. Okay. Then, okay. You know, so, okay. And then, um, so you're doing about 10 of those a week. Yeah. So you're basically trying to do a semi high volume model by exactly. yourself. Exactly. Yeah, by myself. Okay. And that yeah, this is why it's become now it's overwhelming, right? Yeah, and exactly. And now it's like things are falling off and you know, I yeah, so I'm just like really desperate so I don't have to like throw in the towel and I don't know, okay. go hide somewhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> well, first things first, I want to this is interesting because you're attracting clients, just the wrong type of client. Exactly. You need to raise your prices and cut your workload. So even if you doubled what the current, I'm going to switch around in my keynotes here. Well, first of all, let's, let's look at your work. Okay. I'm coming back to this. I'm going to make a full circle. Okay. You good? Okay. Mm -hmm. yep, so this is your good. Work. You have beautiful work. I actually really love your newborn imagery and I feel like your newborn imagery has done nothing but get stronger in, since I last saw you. So this is beautiful. It's stunning. Totally darling. You have a consist, fairly consistent style to your work. Now, when I went to your Facebook page, I didn't oh, necessarily mess. think that. No, it's a mess. Cause I have, I like, I booked a bunch of weddings last year that I'm going through, that I'm cycling through. Okay. Um, so that's a lot of my problem with that right now. Um, so I've got that in there and everybody wants to see their pictures, you know, everybody wants to see yeah. a sneak peek. So I'm just kind of like, uh, um, I can't really just, you know, even though I promised them, you know, and I kind of have to you know, help them out or totally. No, 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 I know it's customer service. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, the work is showing a, a good style. Like I feel like it's not totally solid yet, but right, right. way more you, Ula, than yeah, I yeah. saw a few years ago. Yeah. So no, definitely. I was scared. I, there's some huge growth there. Now on your website, this is it's where so I was like, I wanted to seriously come to the screen and wring your neck. I like right. wanted to be like, ah, ah, fix this. First yeah. of all, this is your homepage. It's bad. It's so bad. I'm like, I, yeah, I, <laughs> she's like, yeah, I have no excuse. <laughs> There's no <laughs> excuse. I'm like, if I had an ex, I wish I had a, like an extra, either a clone or, um, right. 24 hours extra in a week. I could probably <laughs> solve that problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course you're shooting 10 sessions a week. So how on earth are you going to your website, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. So I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, this is a big one and yes. we need to fix it. Yes. First of all, and then second of all, there's no gallery here. There's no, no. like, I don't see your work. Where's your work? 
Right. So what happened was, is I hired a mentor a couple of years ago when I put this out. I'm sure there's probably something somewhere that has a date on it or whatever. Um, and they were like, okay, we'll put these pictures in, but I didn't really understand what I needed to do to make it web ready. And like the person just tore me from one end to the other, like, but didn't explain to me what I needed to do to fix it. So I just okay. kind of like left it. I'm like, no, and that's got to shake your self-esteem right, right there, too. Right, exactly. I mean, that, it was tough, yeah. Yeah, that's incredibly hard. And, yeah, you have to know how to fix it. So let's talk about how you can fix it. Right. First of all, what, how, what are you using in your, in your website? Are you using, like, WordPress or, like, a No, it's just format. Um, so they have, like, the templates are just super clean. It's basically on white. You just kind of, like, drop a box. It's really, really easy. Um, okay. So you don't even have to be, like... Um, know how to do anything really. Okay. So first things first, your images, like that, that image of the little baby with the teddy bear. I mean, so cute. I want right. to see big images front and center. Like I want to see okay. the work and what you produce for clients. Okay. So that Perfect. should be on your homepage and maybe make a slideshow of like five to eight images that just rolls right on the front and center. And then okay. from there, I want one of these tabs over here to say like portfolio or our work or, and separate okay. it into galleries. Now you're in a small town, right? 1500 people. Yeah. So special. And I remember if, correct me if I'm wrong, Ula, and you, you said it earlier, I meet a ton of people all the time. So I don't remember if you said this to me or if it was a different student, but did you say that you wanted to specialize in newborn or you were concerned about specializing? Right. No, I did. I got really worried about it because I was like, I'm going to like turn my back on a lot of um, people. And I actually have, I found it to be a huge problem um, having too many specialties. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, the weddings and the seniors and everything. I'm like, I can't remember all of these poses um, or what I want to do or, and just being tired from like doing all these sessions and, and having to like all these things. Yeah, yeah. Having to like creatively switch your brain. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, okay. but the, the other thing too, is that now what major metropolitan area is close to you? Is that 30 to 40 minute drive from you? There isn't. Um, actually. There isn't. Okay. No, like the 40 minute drive is probably like in between. So that would be like in between the next big city, which is like Minot, which is um, where a lot of, so the Air Force Base is there. So that's where a lot of my clients come from. So okay. they are from all over the United States um, and stuff like that. So they're the ones who like kind of bring the average to the 40 minute because there's like, you know, um, a town that's like 25 minutes so away okay. that come in and stuff like that. And that's on the other side, on the way to Williston or something. So. Okay. So you're in the country. Yep. I am. You're in the country. Okay. So this is where specialization can be really challenging because mm -hmm. you're in a small town. There's a small market base. There's not a ton of people. Um, the fact mm -hmm. that you're shooting 10 clients a week, like makes me so happy. You have no idea. Like there's there's people who want photography. So we've got that going for us right there, right? Right, right. I'm a little worried about you specializing too much into one niche. Right. I really feel like, like you could probably cut the weddings if you wanted to. You could mm -hmm. um, cut the high school senior thing if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of focus on babies, kids, families. Um, and maybe you might need to keep seniors in there and do some commercial work. I, but you don't necessarily need to fully advertise for that all over your site. Does that make right, sense? Right, right. No, exactly. That so makes perfect sense. Tell you, yeah, I'm not going to tell you to like switch to newborn only because your market is so small. Um, right. I, I think that might be a mistake at least right away. What I think you should mm -hmm. do is, is narrow it down to kind of a broad portrait niche and then right, – okay see how that goes and for a year or two. And then from there decide, okay, do I have enough client base to shrink down to just focusing on newborns and babies and kids or, or whatever? Okay. Um, for example, I'm in a town of 90,000. I started off specializing in pets and then decided <laughs> that that was not my forte <laughs> and that uh, babies were my, my set thing. So I did specialize in newborns solely and it worked in my town. But now, as my first newborn clients are getting older, 
I'm getting into kids and families because these people want to keep me as their photographer. And so I'm starting to branch out into a family line and a, what we call a real kids line. So I'm not as niched as I used to be. And business has picked up a little bit. We definitely are still focused on family and children, but I'm not so heavily specialized. So I think heavy specialization is fine in larger markets. But for people like you and me who are, you know, and it worked okay in my market, it was fine, but I think we just have to think about it a little bit more. Okay. That's truly the right decision for the amount of people and the market share that we have in our business, um, in our area. So yeah, front and center images, I want your galleries here separated out so you can have like portfolio here. Um, okay. I was, matter of fact, I would put for portfolio right at the top okay. and then you could have subcategories of, of the different genres that you do newborns kids babies families that kind of thing okay. um and then you have contact blog and frequently asked questions this page is actually blank on your website there's no frequently asked questions no. There. um no there and, isn't and and i you know this already i'm not i'm not saying anything new Ula, but that when that's empty clients go is this person still in business Exactly. You know, I'm sure. and your yeah. blog, I think it's been two years since it's been updated. So people yeah. go, is she still in business? And granted, right. the fact that you have 10 clients a week is awesome because I wouldn't have expected that. I'm sure you saw the look of surprise on my face based on exactly. seeing from the outside as a potential. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. <laughs> so I, this is probably one of the first projects I think that you should work on okay. is getting Number this one. website like much more image heavy front and center all about the client and that frequently asked okay. section page you can just keep it simple for now just do a frequently asked questions area about how it works and what's the process and what do i expect and like the questions that a client would ask like where do i go and how where are we shooting the session and what do i wear and you know do i come back to see the images are you going to put them online you know how does all that work exactly um, and then we're going to talk about your pricing and, and switching to products here in a minute. You can certainly put in product line here. You can put in, um, you know, talking about how it's important, you know, educating the client on the importance of actually displaying something in the home rather than just having a, a, a stick or a of that kind of thing. But for now, right. the full baby steps, just get me pretty. I just, I just want pretty okay. images no problem. and pretty work on there. Um, like I said, your portfolio is good. You have the images are there. Be very selective in what you show. And honestly, okay. even on your Facebook page, start getting particular about what you show, especially okay. if you're going to niche or niche more into families and kids and babies. Maybe it's not, maybe weddings shouldn't be put on the site and on the Facebook page anymore. And if people want to see, no, I just email it to them kind of thing. You know what I mean? Exactly. No, I totally agree. Cause I like, I don't know, one day I was actually able to like, you know, steal away to my studio and actually kind of work in there. And I, you know, just had this idea of like, you know, tweens and under. So it's like from, you know, you know perfect, you know, versus like getting into that older, cause I don't really connect with like older than tweens for yeah. some reason. It's, I'm just like really awkward. Cause I'm like, I don't know how to talk to them. I don't we, know what's cool. Yeah, <laughs> we all have our specialty and you know, it's, I think it's really indicative, especially for people who have kids, you know, like me, it's totally indicative of where your own child is at. My guys right. are about to be six years old and I totally know all about, you mm -hmm. know, Ninjago and Star Wars exactly. and all these things that are cool for a six year old. And when he turns a tween, I'm probably going to know all that and want to go into tweens at that point. So, yes, Andrea. definitely. No, I totally agree. And mine's the same age. So, I totally get it. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, high schooler, <laughs> not quite there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know idea. I'm like, hi. Yeah, you're great. <laughs> Good luck. Like, can you go to sleep so I can pose you? I'm like, I don't know what to do. So. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so let's talk about this whole pricing thing, shall we? Yeah, it's a mess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're so, you have such a good personality. I just adore you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to move my, my pictures up a little bit so we can see ourselves here. Let me, mm -hmm. uh, we should be able to see. There we go. Okay, doesn't want to move you up. So this is 2016. This is last year, correct? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, I love the graphic design and the layout. It's very pretty. It's a little wordy, Thanks. but it's very mm -hmm. well designed. It's clean. Uh, I think if you just, you know, knock down the words a little bit in this style and format, okay. it would be a nice format to go with. Not to say that your 2017 doesn't look good. I think that looks good too. It's just different. Um, okay. Again, assess the brand. And I know your brand with Wild Prairie Photography is a little bit more... Um, flowery for lack of a better word it's it's, right. it's got that very feminine floral whimsical like grass on laura Ingalls wilder kind of kind of feeling which i love right. um this is more clean and modern so mm -hmm. you're going to have to kind of make that determination on the physical visual appearance of your brand and what you want to do um i think exactly. either work no, I have like, I really feel like I'm at this point where I'm having an identity crisis with like wanting, you know, wanting it to be clean, wanting it to be the prairie. I'm like, well, I don't know what to do. I'm thinking about like, I don't know, maybe, you know, just having my camera and like in the font. And so it's just like, it's a big growing thing that I'm going through. And I'm really, you know. Yeah, it is. And I think the biggest thing, biggest little voice in your head right there should be consistency. It, no matter what, just try to stay as consistent as possible. And when you limit your choices and you say, okay, this is the font I have to use. This is the element that's in my logo. I got to use that. So bam, that's done. Exactly. That decision's right. made. Like, and don't ever veer away from it. Because like okay. these fonts probably really aren't your brand, even though it's clean and it looks good. Mm -hmm. The other pricing model that you uh, gave me, you know, this one here on the next page, this is much more... Mm -hmm. synonymous with your logo does that make sense right. yeah. so um let's talk first about 2016 actual pricing and then we'll go from there so this is a shoot and burn model right yep okay so we have family sessions at 175 so you have a 45 to 60 hour session um one clothing change two setups one location okay and so you're giving 40 to 60 images is that right yeah. Okay. So how many hours are you spending on each session? Do you think between shooting it, editing it, admin, um, mm -hmm. processing all that? At that time I was probably editing a session in about five to six hours. Okay. I was really slow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So already, I mean, I know you see it. It's you're mm -hmm. paying your client to photograph them. I mean, pretty much. Yep, exactly. And mm -hmm. so, um, but the f where this came in, it comes in is is really having the guts to change it, right? Right. You know, where the, you know there's a problem, and you know you're mm -hmm. not making money, and you know you're working till two a.m. every morning, um, and so you try to switch. Now, under this model, you were basically just doing digital, and you weren't able to sell anything beyond that. Is that pretty accurate? That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so then you wanted to switch in 2017 to something like this, where you have yeah. standard premium and luxury packages, and you didn't mm -hmm. start offering digital files until you got to the premium package. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so tell me what happened. Um, George brought his family reunion. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uncle Joe came to take, take pictures as well, right? <laughs> yep, they wanted the whole thing. They wanted me there for like the whole weekend, and every family wanted pictures, and they all wanted digitals, and, they all wanted pictures, <laughs> and that was the deal and stuff. So that's what happened, and um, and I got scared, and so I'm like, I at that point I had a studio that I had to pay rent on, um, and basically I just tried to make sure that I've got enough money for rent, and you know, and put yeah. money away for little classes and maybe buy used lens every once in a while. I was lucky. Yeah. That, you know, my D 700 decided to crap out during oh. a free wedding and I luckily had my 7,100. Um, oh. but I luckily had enough money to buy a 750, you know, oh, you poor thing. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. That so fun. that is not a fun position to be in at all. I, I no. Yeah. Okay. So let's kind of break it down a little bit and just analyze this just so we, the audience and myself, I mean, I've, I've looked through it already, but I specifically want the mm -hmm. audience to understand what's happening here. So we have your beginning package at $400 and they get an 11 by 14 and five gift prints and then their slideshow, right? Technically, if they didn't order right. anything else, mm -hmm. that's what they would get. So yeah. in premium package, which is 700, they get a 24 by 30 canvas or $200 to spend towards any wall portrait. Is that accurate? Yep. Then they get the image box with 15 images and all their negatives from the session? 
Yep. Okay. I didn't do the like small, large, because when I, the first time I did IPS, um, I would do the, the, the whole, like pick one thing and they can have smaller little, yeah, um, yeah. digitals and, um, people just wanted to leave right away. And I, you know, I try to sell them into the large size because I didn't have their small ones set up already. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, and, um, but you know, not that I was trying to like get away with anything. I was just, you know, I didn't have time, like, cause I was, didn't have the time really yeah. to do it. Um, and stuff. So, um, so it was more, uh, like, and that's the comfort of like, well, maybe I'll just slowly get out of shooting and burning by like only giving them, you know, yeah, the large files. Yeah. Okay. So the luxury package is basically just more than that. So they get the wall credit mm -hmm. image box with 20 images and then the digital negatives as well. Okay. So mm -hmm. pretty much most people are, you, your goal was to get most people to buy that premium in the middle package. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So before you did this in 2016, how many sessions were you shooting on that old pricing model? Um, about the same. About the same. Then yeah. how many sessions did you do on this pricing model? None. None. Okay. So mm -hmm. you, and how long did you, what, how long of a chance did you give this? Not a chance. I think I made this thing up and I probably didn't, I had like, I don't know. I, I had so much on the books for the old pricing. Um, and I, I, then we had the family reunion and I just yeah, kind yeah, of tucked yeah. it away. So you never actually gave this to, to new clients. So no, you, I didn't. you wanted to do this, but you just got chicken and chickened out. Definitely. Totally. I lost all my guts and okay. I was a total chicken. Yeah. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> don't be, Hey George, go away. <laughs> exactly. Go away. Um, don't be hard on yourself it is totally understandable to get chicken. This is a big jump because what I'm looking at yeah. in your 2017 pricing now, I'm correct. Me, I wasn't sure if I got this right. So correct me. I'm wrong. This was emailed to me. Yep. Is this accurate for 2017? It is. Okay. It what is, struck sadly. me is, it's funny actually... is that it's cheaper than this. Mm -hmm. Yep. It is. So you went from a newborn session being 225 to now mm -hmm. a newborn session being 175. Exactly. Okay. So first of all, uh, there's a couple ways to go about doing this in terms of getting your guts. Okay, Ula. Mm -hmm. First of all, you know you're dying a slow death right now. Exactly. You're, you're, you're either going to burn out because you're so exhausted. You're going to not, you're not making any money. And so you're going to crash and burn there too. So you can either look at this from the perspective of, holy cow, if I don't fix this, I'm going to lose my photography business. Kind of that fear factor. Yeah. No, or definitely. you can look at it from the point of view of if I can change and, and increase my business and make and serve my clients more. Mm -hmm. So right now, you even said it in the beginning, you're not serving your clients very well. You're basically shooting the session and then just tossing them a disc, pretty much is what you're doing, right? Yep. Hoping to do it on schedule. Exactly. Are you download delivery or are you stick delivery? Um, both. They get gallery and um, okay. and a USB. Okay, so you're paying for the USB plus the service to, to get them to download, which is yep, definitely exactly. part of your cost along with time mm -hmm. involved to do it, along with exactly. all, you know, we don't even need to get into the mm -mm. software subscriptions yep. and camera gear and all that, all that crap that you got to right. pay for. Now, do you still have your studio? Yes, I do. You still have the studio. So you're paying rent yep. on top of that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to answer this question because I know we're in a public arena here, but I, I, mm -hmm. if you're okay with it and if you're not okay with it, just say, I'd rather not say, and that's perfectly fine. Okay. Um, how much salary are you taking home? I actually don't know. Like I have okay. like, I'm actually like, I have a drawer of cash for paying my rent and I put my checks in my check account and I, and you just kind of have do. a strong handle on where the money's going and where it's coming from. Is that, is that? Yep, exactly. Okay. Yep. As long as I have a positive balance, you know, um, <laughs> you're like, I'm good. I'm going to bounce any checks. <laughs> 
<laughs> Tracy, I have done friend. that so often it's not even funny. So you are not alone. Even successful businesses exactly. like me still don't always know where their money is coming from and where it's going. So don't right, talk. exactly. So I'm just yep, that's what I okay. it's it just got so overwhelming, my business, everything got so out of control. Um you know, I like, I probably drive my bank tellers absolutely crazy. I'm like always, I'm going to ask for a balance. Cause I'm like, I think I probably did it wrong. I don't know. And, <laughs> yeah, no, well, and you know, and they're just, they look at me like you just brought in $2,000 worth of checks, you know, like, oh. yeah, no, I hear you. you. Okay. So first of all, we need to get a handle on that. And this mm -hmm. sucks. Nobody wants to do it, including myself. That's why I hired it no. out. Um, do you have any kind of accounting software that you use? No. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of the cheapest. Do you have option. anything to suggest? What? I'm trying to think of the cheapest option, like because you're on a tight budget. Do you use any studio management software, like 17 hats or anything like that? Yep. Yep, I okay. do. So you already have hats. 17 hats. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Done. Okay. 17 <laughs> hats will do this for you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. 17 hats is awesome software. I just switched over to it and I'm very happy. Now, is it completely robust and will do everything? No, but it's enough for what you need right now. Okay. So, okay. you know, the little, um, the, there is a bookkeeping tab on the left. <laughs> no. Have you opened it? <laughs> no, I'm giving you grief. I'm sorry. I want you to go in there and explore that. And okay. do you do the invoices inside 17 hats for your clients? Mm -mm. Okay, you can actually. No, it's okay, honey. This is so. Don't even, <laughs> George, go away. Go away, George. Yes, exactly. I'm like I'm learning. I'm like I. Yeah, I don't like. It's fun. My husband's like I don't even know how you managed to get this far, and I'm like it just kind of became a snowball, and it became big. And Ula, this where, th that, this thing called entrepreneurship is a huge learning curve. It is overwhelming right. at times and do not feel bad about not doing that. That's why you're coming to me. That's why exactly. you're in these forums and learning and growing. That's why you're watching creative live. That's why you're trying to educate yourself. This is the most powerful thing you can do for yourself right now. And I'm so proud of you for being here, especially on a friggin' public deal. And you're like willing to put yourself <laughs> out there and that takes balls. And I am super proud of you right now. Like, Everybody on Facebook should be seriously commenting right now about how brave you are because you are a brave, incredible woman and you have got your shit together and you know what you're doing and I know you can do this. Okay. You're getting the Julia smack yeah. down right now. You are going to make this happen. Okay. You're going to make this happen. Sure. I want you to go into 17 minutes and I want you to go on the okay. bookkeeping column and I want you to start using the invoices feature. Okay. Okay. If you need a quick and dirty tutorial, I will pay Belinda to walk you through it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Well, she's Thank laughing you. over there in the background. She's like, what are you volunteering me for? <laughs> Seriously. She's quick, like, I don't have that in my purse. <laughs> on how to use the project feature of okay. 17 hats and the invoicing. She's like my little 17 hats guru over here. She's amazing. Awesome. Um, and using the project feature and the invoicing feature, because what happens is when you do that, it'll track your income inside 17 okay. hats and then you can actually import your bank statements in 17 hats because I'm assuming you're right. using like debit cards and credit cards to pay your expenses mm -hmm. right so yeah. all that can be automatically imported into 17 hats and then all you have to do okay. is reconcile and balance your accounts every month and categorize categorize awesome. your expenses so you so the tax man will be ready come December 31st okay exactly then you will have a monthly record keeping sheet of how much money is leaving the company and how much money is coming into the company and that's going to okay. give you a much clearer perspective on the financials of your business because okay. and it, just warning, it's going to depress you at first. When you get a full month going, you're going to be like, holy cow, I'm not making barely any money. Right. And so, and I know you know that intuitively right now because of what mm -hmm. you're charging, but I want you to see it in black and white on a balance sheet. Like I, exactly. I want you to see that and just go, whoa, wake up, smell the coffee. Mm -hmm. Because from there, what we're going to do is we're going to adjust your pricing. Okay. Now, okay. I don't think I necessarily want you to jump straight into products right away. Right. Okay. Because as much as I, and this clearly, you know, this is not, for those of you watching, this is not the same for everybody. Ula's situation mm -hmm. is unique. She's a very low priced digital model 
So to jump directly to this is really right. hard. Like <laughs> getting your clients to be okay with that is going to be a big challenge. So right. you can either jump ship and jump off the cliff and then just expect to market to a whole new market segment and start from scratch. But mm -hmm. you're in a studio, you've got overhead, you need to raise some money for your family on a monthly basis. I don't want to see you have six months of like torture to get right. move into the next client segment base. So exactly. what I think you should do for now is do a modified version of this. Okay. Right. So I think first, we talked about that when we okay. met in Seattle, that yes. you were just like, why don't you just have like, you know, a special like to kind of like get people used to it. And I think you could throw out a number like $80 or something like that to do the build your own goods kind of, or build your own package yeah. or something like that. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know if that's what we're kind of heading towards. Um, so I don't know. Sorry, well, I, I actually, I actually think that we might go a different route, Ula. And this is okay. Like said, awesome. This is completely up to you. And you know, I can okay. suggest things from here to high heaven, but ultimately mm -hmm. I don't know you deep down. I don't know how Ula operates and what you're good at right. and how you make decisions and how, how right. you're best at communicating with your clients. So what I suggest may not feel like it fits and you may go, okay. Oh, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with that. Like, and if right. those bells start going off, then you need, then we need to talk about it and rethink it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But my okay. thought is to create a simple package structure. They all have digitals in them. Okay. Okay. But then they all have some kind of art piece in them. It can be, okay. and you could do go as simple as just being like, okay, the first package starts at two ninety five. Okay. We're going to jump okay. in price. Okay. Yep. So, um, you know, and birth story and stuff like that, the, and fresh 48, those are different. I mean, those are kind of mm -hmm. documentary type <laughs> sessions. So they're, mm -hmm. they're going to be their own animal. I'm talking exactly. Okay, Ula takes the family out to a field and does a beautiful family portrait session. Ula does a kid session in her studio. Ula does a newborn session in her studio. Just keep it simple. Those should all okay. be the same. Okay? Okay. And you can even start out with no session fee if you want. Okay. And they just pay a $100 retainer that goes towards okay. the package of their choice. Okay? Okay. So... Uh, so for from that being and the retainers non-refundable so if they decide not to purchase you do get to keep the hundred bucks mm -hmm. kind of thing you know that 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 you can't do work for nothing but you no. could start just very I'm, I'm so brainstorming right now so I would need to really like hash right. this out with you and like figure out the cost of goods and and do the numbers before we commit to anything but I'm just hypothetically exactly. giving you a structure that we can then mold and refine okay mm -hmm. so what if you started off with a set of three or four packages that were um, digitals and a product credit. So that's it. Okay. So for example, we're going to do um, the first package will be two ninety five, and you get eight digitals and a fifty dollar, a hundred dollar product credit. Now you're still cheap. Okay, that's still mm -hmm. really cheap. Mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. you to move up from there. We're not going to stay there. Okay. Make sense? No. But yes. I need to jump you. And we're going to jump you slowly, okay? Okay. What I want to try to do is reduce the number of clients that you're getting, but make a little more money in the process without shock-waving everybody. Does that make yeah. sense? No, it totally does. So if you start at like two ninety five and do, okay, uh, eight digitals and a $50 print credit or whatever, then the second mm -hmm. package is four ninety five dollars with mm -hmm. 15 digitals, and $150 print credit. I'm told okay. I need to write this down and like hash it out. So let me, mm -hmm. don't take what I say with a grain of salt. Or do take what I say. <laughs> Sorry. Do yeah. take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, and then the last package could be um, $6.95 or $7.95. You get all your images and a $250 print credit. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm doing with you? I'm going, okay, yes, yes. we're stepping you up in price. The client is still getting what they want, those digitals. There's not as right. many of them, but you're also mm -hmm. kind of forcing them into art of some kind. 
I mean, exactly. so I keep saying the first package, two ninety five, you get eight digitals and a fifty dollar credit. You could get mm -hmm. a gorgeous little eleven by fourteen. You'll end up paying a little bit more, or an eight by ten. That way, they're getting mm -hmm. something printed and their files, or some kind of file. Exactly. Set. Now, those numbers can play around and switch within there. It doesn't have to be eight digitals. It can be ten if you want. Clearly, your clients are used to getting all the files. Okay. Mm -hmm. And with this session fee that they're currently undergoing. So, mm -hmm. um, and you could make it so that every package provides all the files. You could do that. Mm -hmm. You know, you could okay. make it a really slow step up would be to go, okay, 350, no session fee. The first package has all the files and nothing else. You could go there. Mm -hmm. Then the second package would have, would be 595 or 695, have all the files and an art credit of some kind. Now, the trouble here is that everybody's just going to want to do the files and run, right? They're going right, to want right. to do that first package and run. And so that's where your job as me not knowing Ula and what you're good at, you'd have right. to educate them on the value of printing, come up with a gorgeous product line that they'd want to buy, that kind of thing, and then bring them back for that IPS session. So with mm -hmm. most of your clients living 40 minutes away, I kind of go, mm, maybe it's better to do the other version and continue to let you sell online for a mm -hmm. while and just do simple products that the client can then right. purchase with their print credit. And that would kind of slowly at least up the price and get you more profitable with fewer clients. Is that following? Exactly. Yep, so yep, exactly. I would, but at the same time, Ula, this is only for 2017. Right. Like 2018, the whole stuff's, we're ripping the bandit off and going higher. Right, right, exactly. Do you see my point? Because <laughs> I right. want to give you the time. I, I, I want to reduce the number of clients so you're not crazy and you actually have time to spend with your beautiful child, okay, number one, and your family, mm -hmm. number two. You're not up till two in the morning exhausting yourself, number three. Number four, you're actually making money with the fewer number of clients. They're adjusting to the price increase, so you don't, you'll lose some, but you won't, you won't hear crickets. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. And then from exactly. there, that'll give you the money you need, but it'll reduce the time you're spending, which will give you time to work on things like your website, your branding, a product line, right. that. Okay? Exactly. And then once yes. that's all done, the website's done, and the brand is developed, and the work is more refined, then come 2018, you will look more expensive, so you can then raise the price to meet that. Exactly. Does that make sense? No, it totally makes sense. Yeah, because there's, I feel like there's no, like, transition you know what I mean it was like all or nothing and I'm like I'm not very good at gambling so uh, <laughs> always put on black right <laughs> yeah exactly like, and, I, black, and I would forget right? and you do red and then everything's gone and, and whatever so yeah definitely so yeah that totally makes sense so the first order of, so let's kind of wrap up a review the first order of business okay. number one is to build a pricing structure with packages that step you up okay, okay. I want your average more in the 450 range Four to four fifty. Okay. okay, and I know that's doubling your prices. So that's a, that's a lot. I mean, that's a big job for you. And it's going to be a little scary. So if you if you want it in the three ninety five range, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to see what happens. We're going to see if your client numbers decrease, which is the goal. Right. That's okay. the goal. Okay. Yes. I want your client numbers to go down. I know you think I'm crazy right now. No, but no, I do. And it's <laughs> right. It's the Pareto pr principle, the 2080 or the 80, 20, you know, exactly. Like, exactly. exactly. And so. if you have more time to spend on your business, then you'll be able to raise your prices even more and then shoot fewer right. clients. I mean, we shoot at the most 10 a month at the most. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably going crazy. I'm not knowing what to do. A session, so it's, it's, <laughs> it's easy to handle it. Not easy, but yeah. it's much more manageable. Okay. Right. Now, will you ever get to that average in your market? Mm, I don't know. You're in a small town out in the country. It's, yep. uh, I don't know the, I don't know what kind of industry is there or what the average incomes are or, or the research that you've done there. But if it's on the low end, uh, then you're pro you may be staying in that five to 700 mm -hmm. range on a more permanent basis. And that's okay. I would, I, I know that you can get there and I want to see you get there. Okay. Perfect. So Thank number you. one, Come up with a pricing structure. You can use okay. kind of the model that I gave you as a base. Make sure it meets okay. the cost of goods, okay? Okay. Um, and just come up with that for now and put that out there to your new clients, okay? This okay. is going to be the scariest part. 
But if you can offer your clients what they have been getting in the past, digital files, then they're not going to be as disappointed or upset or wanting to find others. Does that right. make sense? Exactly. So, no, it totally does. The second order of business is to fix that website. I want that website yeah. to look like your $2,000 okay. photographer. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Lots of big images. Your work needs to be up there. We need to know information. If I'm a client and I don't know what's going on or how it works, I need to be able to go to that storefront window, your online storefront mm -hmm. window and go, okay, I know what Ula and Couture and Wild Prairie Photography is about. Okay. Okay. Uh, from there, that right there is going to be a huge step in the right direction. Secondly, okay. and we haven't talked about this much, but are you doing pre-consultations with your clients? I did in the past and I don't do it so much now. I just basically just ask the basic, very basic, what colors you like? What colors don't you like? Yeah. Um, and I like pull stuff. Um, cause I have this like weird, um, see, you know, I, um, OCD thing where people dig through my stuff and I get a little like, um, <laughs> nervous and <laughs> I sweat a little bit. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I, I, that I try to help. I'm like, don't help. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. So I just like, I much rather just pull it all out. I put it on this ottoman in front of the, you know, in front of the sofa. And I'm just like, here, you can pick from here, but please don't go over there. And yes, dig in my yes, stuff, yes, that's good. Okay. Um, okay. So if you're going to start doing this model of digitals with a, with a product credit, mm -hmm. then what I would like you to do is, um, start doing a little bit and it can be on the phone, but do a little bit more okay. of a pre-consultation where you're asking them, you know, what do they want to do with the images? What's their goal for okay. the session? Where do they want to hang image? Where, how do they see, how do they want to experience these images five, 10 years from now when they're really okay. special to them, their child has grown up. This is the memory they have left of their child. How do they want to experience that every day? Do they want to walk by it in their home? Do they want to have an album or a book or something that they can pass on to their kids? Make them start, plant the seed of the sale and make them start thinking about what they want to do with the images because that will help with the packages and the product credit. Make sense? Okay. Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. This does mean, and you already have a product line here. I mean, it, it looks like you've got that work kind of set up. You can either right. keep this as is or simplify it even further. You know, don't even worry about the specialty stuff. Just do print, okay. canvas, and a couple albums and that's okay. it leave it at that. All right. With okay. selling online, your challenge is going to be showing off these products. You're going to have to get samples and take beautiful imagery, product imagery mm -hmm. of these so that you can show them off on the website. And when they're at the studio, have samples that they can look through and sit them down before the session starts and go, okay, in your pre-consultation, you talked about, you know, wanting to do something for the family room wall. These are the different finishes we have. When you order, you're going to be ordering online. So I want to make sure that you have a good idea of these finishes and their investment levels so that when you get online, you'll, you'll know what, you, what, you'll, what your budget will be and, and how you'll be spending your budget on your portraits. Like literally say that to them. So that they are perfectly clear with the plan. They are perfectly clear with the way things work. They are perfectly clear with your packages. And when they go to order online, now all of a sudden there's no question. There's no overwhelm. It's just a matter of filling the package. Does that make sense? Okay. No, I think totally that will start you off at least in the right direction. Okay. Okay. Do you have any final questions for me, sweetie, before we, before we bug out of here? Um... No, I don't think so. I think I'm good. Sorry, I'm all like, oh, that was a lot, I know, but I really I appreciate it. No, because I'm like... you on in an hour. I know. I'm so sorry to like... But it's we perfect. Are recording. I, it's being recorded. Mm -hmm. so you can go back and watch it again. Exactly. Um, um, but I really appreciate it, though. I'm like, it was great. It's good to hear the feedback of like the work that it's, you know, worth something, you know, that it it's... It is worth it. It is better. Worth it. And growing confidence, sweetie, comes sometimes from just faking it and just right. forcing yourself to stick with something. And when it's okay. not working, ask yourself why it's not working. Don't just automatically react to the George in your head. Okay. You know, question him and go, why isn't this working? Is it truly the price or is there some other factor taking place? Successful entrepreneurs are ones who are constantly questioning they're constantly mm -hmm. asking themselves, how can I make it better? How can I adjust? How can I tweak? How can I grow? 
How can I, how do I see myself in five years and what's the path to get there? And when I run into problems, saying to myself, there's, oh, there's always a solution. Right, right. There's a great, I've fallen on my face so many times I can't even count, but I always know that there's an alternative. Right. There's, there's, a, there's a door that can be opened somewhere else or a different path to the same result. And sometimes that path takes you down a result that you didn't expect that's better than what you originally hoped for. Exactly. But if you just no. immediately react to George and go, oh my gosh, I'm not doing that, then yeah. you're going to get stuck. Yeah, and that's so, where I'm at. And, and it's so, I, I get it. It's so, it's so easy to go there. But you are doing yourself a disservice by doing that. You know, you are stagnating your own growth by listening to that. And so if you think about that, every time that voice in your head wants to tell you to stop, you need to tell that voice, if I stop, I won't grow. So I'm not going to stop. Don't stop ever, Ula, ever. It's persistence. It's determination. It's knowing that whatever storm your little business makes its ship go into, that you can weather it. There will be a different way around it. You may have to pull the sails in and like regroup and spend a little money or rein in or, you know, there's, there's, there's always, and that's the beauty of entrepreneurship is f finding the problem to the puzzle. Um, and when you solve it, you grow your confidence. And confidence truly comes from knowledge of knowing what's happening in your business, constantly questioning it, constantly taking that 40,000 foot look and going, okay, how can I fix this? Where's the real problem? Mm -hmm. Where's the real problem? Do you know what I mean? Sometimes no, the problem I... isn't always where you think it is. So be willing to, to analyze things from all angles and you'll be unstoppable. Your work is beautiful. You have no problem there. You're a kind, sweet girl. You have your leap together, you know, and, <laughs> and you are determined. The fact that you took a train from North Dakota to come see me at Creative Live because you wanted to be there tells me that you have a bee in your bonnet that's buzzing around in there that wants to make this yeah. happen. So whenever yeah. George gets at you, say to him, George, if I stop, I won't grow. And I have to grow because if I don't grow, I'll die. If I don't grow, I won't become the Ula that I know I can be. Does that make sense? No, it makes total sense. You can I do it. it. And I am so <laughs> honored that you came on here today to do this publicly. I am actually quite humbled that you were willing. So thank you <laughs> for sharing. And I really, really, truly hope that by doing that, you were able to help a lot of other people because I have a big feeling that this is a problem that you're not alone in. And you help right. a lot of other photographers today to, to get past some things themselves. So thank you. Very thank you. Much. Okay, just a final note for all those of you. Uh, if you didn't join us, if you're watching on YouTube, the recording, you can see these broadcasts live in our Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Julia Kelleher. Come join us there. Uh, please note in your profile whether you're a professional photographer because it's only open to professional photographers. So give us a website or a Facebook page or some way that we know that you're a photographer and we'll let you in. If you'd like to reach me in other places, you can facebook.com forward slash Jewel Images or of course on Google Plus, Pinterest and Instagram as well. So again, Ula, thank you so much for helping mm -hmm. us dump the shoot and burn and get the exactly. guts to, to switch. <laughs> I appreciate it so dearly and go ahead and stay on the line and we'll say goodbye in a minute. But for now I'm going to uh, stop sharing with the rest of the world. So you and I can, can say goodbye in a more private way. Okay. Again, thank you everyone for joining us and uh, we will see you next time. Take care everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>